Why the hell aren't people having sex anymore? A new Scientific American article reports that 44% of young men and 74% of women have zero sex. That number's doubled in the last 10 years. So I have a crazy theory that's going to piss a lot of people off on why this is. So here's my theory. The modern processed food system has so bloated men and women's faces and bodies that they're no longer sexually attractive to other people. So the pool of people we find hot enough that I want to have sex with has shrunk in most countries. It's now too small for everybody to be able to find a partner. Modern food has made most humans the least attractive version of themselves. We're pushing way too many calories into way too small bodies. Bodies We're feeding you know, like we're cows. Too many high glycemic carbs, they spike your insulin, force the body to store fat and bloat from excess water retention. No one looks pretty with a bloated face. For example, a new study in Neuroscience News found a statistical connection between the consumption of refined carbs and decreased facial attractiveness. They can find it in a couple hours. It's crazy. So we aren't finding enough people attractive enough, except in a few remaining countries. I'll explain in a second. So now you throw in a world of free porn and a few extremely attractive models on social media being pushed continually on your algorithm. And it's getting worse. A study back in 2009 found that teens are spending 87 hours a year on porn. That was in 2009. Imagine what it is now. So the standard of what be- what's beautiful is going up. We see the most beautiful faces, you know, push continually. And the amount of people who actually look remotely beautiful like that is getting lower and lower. Hence, <laughs> boom, civilization crisis. It's the perfect storm for societal disaster. So people down, they just retreat into fantasy porn, video games, because their minimum standards of sexual attraction aren't being met. Face it, no species, human included, really wants to mate with someone that doesn't turn them on physically. A study out of University of Pretoria, South Africa, found that individuals with lower facial adiposity, which is lower fat in the face, are perceived as healthier and more attractive. And that's likely due to what? Association with lower risk of cardiovascular disease and other health issues. That means that trying to convince humans, like woke society is trying to do, that bloated faces are attractive is like trying to convince DNA that mating with an unhealthy person is your optimal strategy. Why the hell would biology allow that? What would be the upside? It's not going to happen. You can't change DNA. It changes very slowly like 1% per thousand or several thousand years. So look, instead of addressing this honestly, woke society tries to go against 10,000 generations of DNA programming and attempt to convince us that our conscious minds, it tries to go in and say unhealthy bodies are magically attractive, but they aren't. And no amount of propaganda is going to alter our unconscious desires. This goes back to Freud. (laughs) So (laughs) if you believe in Freud, Anyway, I'm convinced that big processed food corporations and pharmaceutical companies that profit off selling drugs to unhealthy people and junky food are tricking politicians and influencers into spouting nonsense to confuse the population. So nobody can really think straight and stand up to them. The food system's to blame. So there's a lack of willpower and logical thinking by the average person. But a few places in the world have figured this out and come up with a solution. We got to learn from them. Okay, a few countries in the world are famous for attractive people. Think Sweden, Denmark. Those countries have people who eat to maintain the most attractive version of their face and bodies. If they switch to American diet, trust me, ain't nobody gonna think Swedish people and Danish are attractive after ten years of that. The society, their society, will go right back into the same trouble that America's in. I live in Scandinavia, Scandinavia full time or part time. I can literally spend one month in Scandinavia, Sweden, or Denmark, and not see one, not even one crazy unhealthy person. When I fly back to America, 10 seconds in the airport. You know? Look, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I'm the ideal beauty. I'm just saying we have a problem, and it's not actually that hard to fix. Because almost every country, including the U.S., has beautiful people. It's just hidden under bloated faces and bloated bodies. If you optimize the calorie uh, calorie intake, you switch to low glycemic index carbs, and this weird stage of human history is going to disappear. 
is going to be looked back at some weirdo aberration anomaly, just like we look back at the Middle Ages and say, what was going on there? It's time to move on. Time to move on. Become the best looking version of your genetics. Now, I can talk on this a little longer. We can get more controversial. But I will say this. Humans live in phases of delusion. You see mass delusions. There's actually a famous book on this. The Mass Delusions of Civilizations. We are currently in one. Instead of our looking at ourselves and being like, yo, we ain't good. We're not disciplined. Parents admitting that they suck at how they're raising their kids physically, I'm talking about. No, we just try to retreat into delusion. No, everything's okay. Everybody's equally beautiful. That's not true. That's like saying everybody's tall. The word tall means there's a delineation. At this point, you become tall. As a man, let's say, I'm six foot, you become tall. If you're four foot, we shouldn't say everybody's tall, including four footers, because we demean and lose touch with reality. So in society, you know, we want to say everybody's equally sexually attractive because that doesn't hurt any feelings. But it's not true. And not one person, including, and, and by the way, in the zoos, rhinoceros they're trying to breed rhinoceros in captivity they just bring a male rhinoceros in the females like i ain't mating with them panda bears you see that nature is picky and it's built that way and just like zookeepers can't force people to mate you can't force humans to mate guess what they end up doing they watch porn they play video games and it becomes what are the statistics like 70 percent of y'all women and almost 50 percent of dudes that are young. That's the time when you, you're you built to have the most sex. Or completely sexless. Zip up. Now, there's other reasons for this. I'm not going to oversimplify and say this is the only reason because people aren't attractive. There's all kinds of societal structure issues that are going on that keep people from wanting to have sex. People afraid. I mean, you got financial. If a dude's doing well or a woman's doing well, they don't want to get married because it can get taken Half of it, you got weird laws in states like California and stuff, all this unfair stuff. So it's a complex reason. You have the deconstruction of the family unit. hundred years ago, we used to be rural, and now we're almost all urban. I mean, I'm not just saying that is bloated faces. I'm just saying bloated faces and the are the worst version of you. Now, you can also be too skinny, and you can have like a shrunken skeleton face. You know, so it's like the optimal face. But now, this high glycemic thing is a big deal. People trying to go no carb. You don't need to go no carb. Vegetables have, are carbs. And they're not, you're not going to get fat off vegetables. It's high glycemic index stuff. You can Google the glycemic index for foods. Go with the low glycemic stuff. Like, I don't know, avocado, well, avocados. We'll talk about that separate. It's kind of a superfood. But if you look at the difference between a candy bar... And even, you know, an orange. They both have sugar. But with the fiber of the whole orange, it's slowing down this glycemic insulin spike. You know, you can go too far with fruit too. But I don't know anybody that looks horrible from eating fruit. It, like, let's be real talk. If you cut out things that have ingredients in it, you'll do fine. I call it the zero ingredient diet. I have my 150 body system, which is, you know, I'm a busy entrepreneur on lots of different companies. So it's kind of like how you make millions of dollars as an entrepreneur and stay healthy. It's my whole 150 body. I'll put a link, shameless plug, 150body.com. This is the whole system. It really works. I launched a test group last year, like testimonials of all these entrepreneurs are coming in. Where it's like, I bought one dude, lost 150 pounds on it. And it's, 100, it, it's based on 150 body is the concept that modern science says, right now with the science we have, Humans could live to about age 150, which is a long time. But you have to know the principles and the frameworks. So it's 150 simple frameworks to understand. It sounds like a lot, but it's not really because it's like some of them are super simple. If you follow the frameworks of 150 body, 150body.com, like in a lot of it, well, one whole part of it is understanding this high glycemic, low glycemic things. You know, so like cucumber has some carbs. <laughs> but it's not it done spike your insulin. And that study that I mentioned earlier is fascinating because what it says is like within two or three hours of eating like, let's say sugary cereal for breakfast, 
your face, if you show, let's say you're a man, you show it to a whole bunch of women, they find you less attractive. Somehow there's a cue in the human body. There's a fascinating cue that says less attractive because you have that higher blood sugar. And that's associated with all kinds of nasty things, including water retention, which bloats up the face. You know, so some people go car, car, go carnivore, which I think is extreme. You don't have to go full carnivore, but some people find carnivore to work because their comparison was processed high glycemic carb over here versus carnivore. Of course, car, carnivore is going to do better. Just like vegan, if you're, you know, some people look horrible on vegan if they're eating processed vegan food. So it's that high glycemic index. Like you can Google, you can use ChatGPT. Before you eat, like you can eat carbs. It's like sweet potato. You know, is that sweet potato I going to mess you up? I mean, I guess if you eat 10 sweet potatoes a day. But in general, Sweden, Denmark, beautiful people, they're eating carbs all day. They eat bread. France, Italy, they're eating bread. But they don't have the weird oils we have. That's a whole another conversation, this crazy oil thing. So it's an interesting moment in time to think that we've created a system where people ain't going to have sex anymore. I mean, sex is the strongest drive that humans have. And the thought that, what? People ain't going to have sex anymore? Like 50 plus percent of men and women just stop. That tells you you have a problem that you can't, if you think it's big, you have no idea. People talk about global warming, climate change. Okay. People talk about war, you know, World War Three. But what about the war that's happening right in front of you, especially if you live in it, by the way, it's not just the U S it's not just the U S I go to London. It's like <laughs> becoming like America It's anywhere that modern diets infiltrating. You even see it a little bit in Scandinavians are tra- starting to get bigger and bigger. You know, that, that, that bloated thing again, it's ratios. I'm not saying every woman has to weigh a hundred pounds. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ratios the ratios <laughs> for sure men and women shouldn't have bellies we know this bellies are associated big bellies in men especially but also in women and people try to say no you know the difference between the different types of fat you know you have different types of fat one's organ fat one's kind of like subcutaneous fat yeah, yeah. once again <laughs> people trying to oversimplify, find little science and say, well, okay, that's not working fat. So it's in general, big waste saying good on men and women, period. And I've seen that rise. I've been to Brazil, I've been to Australia. Australia is pretty healthy though. At least Bondi Beach, <laughs> which is not representative of all Australia. But, you know, now to be clear, you can be skinny and unhealthy too. I have, my mom's friend was, was a skinny diabetic. I mean, it, Type two from bad lifestyle. She just happened to stay skinny. So it's not as simple as just, but bloated faces, no bueno. You know, that's a real one specifically. Better to be a big curvy body people can handle, but the face is like the thing that we use for sexual attraction. Yeah, there's just not the amount of people who could be beautiful in the United States is mind blowing. You see all these people, like if you would remove these layers off your face should be beautiful. You know, it sucks. And But instead we say they are beautiful with the layers of fate. You ain't going to trick DNA, ladies and gentlemen. Stop it. DNA is hard-coded. Dudes and women just going to stop having sex while the whole, whole woke world keeps going, no, you're fine. You're fine. Well, you just lose. It's a feeling. And that feeling gets lost. So, anyway. It's my rant for the day. <laughs> Check out the 150 body if you want to try this. It's got it starts with a 15 day challenge, and then you can try the whole 150 body system. It works. I always do a test group first, and the test group went very well, better than expected. So now, now the full thing's out.